Hi everybody, my name is Connor McDonald. This is how you get in touch with me via Twitter, and this is my blog. I'm one of the developer advocates inside Oracle, trying to make your life more productive and successful as a developer. This is the next of the KISS series of videos, keeping it simple with SQL, focusing on partitioning. These are short two minute sessions with a strong developer focus because partitioning is often seen as the realm of the DBAs. In this session, we'll look at multi-column range partitioning. Let's look at a table called sales data. Now they didn't use a date for the columns here to record the month of which the sale occurred. They used two columns, YYYY indicating the year and MM indicating the month. Now this table as you can see is not partitioned and in fact before we go any further, I should say that storing dates not as a date data type is a bad idea when it comes to Oracle. If you want some good details on that, check out Richard Foote's blog post at tinyurl.com bad-date-oracle. Have a look at that first before you continue. But let's take our sales data table, it has columns YYYYMM, and we can still partition it. If we want to partition it, say, into fiscal quarters, then we're going to need to use both columns. So let's see how we do that. First of all, we have the familiar partition by range, but we have two columns now. Then the partition values clause looks very similar to what we saw before, but the values less than now includes two values within the parentheses. So you can see there, I've actually got four partitions for the year being 2010, Q1 up to Q4. And you can see I'm going less than 04, less than 07, less than 10 being October, and less than January on the following year. So there's our example of breaking the data up into quarters. Now I stress, when you have two columns in a range partition definition, it's actually acts as a tiebreaker. Let's look at an example. What I mean by tiebreaker is, when I'm inserting into the sales data table, I look at the first column in the partitioning definition, the year column, 2010 tells me it's at least restricted to one of these four partitions. Then I need a tiebreaker. I use the month, in this case three, to tell me that that will actually go into the first quarter. So the subsequent columns in the range partition definition act as tiebreakers to determine the correct partition. If it's not needed, I can go straight in there. Here's an example of where I've inserted five more rows into the table. You can see I've got a row in month three and month two. Then I've put a row into month four and month nine and 10 at the end. To see that that's been separated into each of the partitions, I'll gather statistics on the table and then I'll simply look at the number of rows in each partition. And as you can see, in the four partitions for 2010, we had two rows and one row respectively in the other three. Let me reiterate something really important. This is a tiebreaker system, not some sort of multi-dimensional range facility. Let's look at an example here, which I've seen once where someone got the concept quite wrong. They had a table of mobile phone usage, and for a given account ID and for a given date range, they stored the number of calls that person had actually made. Once again, we partition this table. They use start and end day as a multi-column range partition. So they partition by start and end, and you can see what they did was they went, okay, I'll go from February 1st to March 1st for partition one, March 1st to April 1st for partition two, and so forth down but they misconstrued the idea. What they really wanted to do was do that all on start day. By including end day, they started to see some quite odd things happening. Let's have a look. Let me insert a row for the 7th of Feb up to the 12th of Feb. So account number one did 100 calls from the 7th of Feb to the 12th of Feb. They then did 175 calls from the 12th of February to the 13th of April. Let's regather stats and have a look at where the rows went into the partition. And this looks a bit strange. Even though we have data spanning from 7th of February to the 13th of April, it all went into partition number two. Why is that? That's because it's a tiebreaker. Let's look at the partition definitions again. Less than February, less than March, less than April, all on the start date. And if we have a tie, then we would use the end date purely as a tiebreaker. So when I insert a row for the 7th of February as the start date, I don't need to use the end date at all. That automatically tells me it's going into partition number two. When I insert a row for the 12th of February, I don't need the end date. I don't need a tiebreaker. It automatically goes into partition number two. It's a tiebreaker system, not multi-dimensional. You can run these scripts yourself by using the live SQL link in the YouTube description notes below. In the next session, we're gonna look at 
hash partitioning. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you all again soon on the KISS principle. Keeping it simple with SQL.